Hey everyone, Wannabot here, and welcome to Planet of Lana. It is a cinematic adventure platformer uh, made by Wishfully and published by Thunderful, who were kind enough to reach out and sponsor this video. I usually don't play a whole lot of cinematic platformers, but this one looks gorgeous. And I'm a big fan of pretty much everything that Thunderful has uh, made or published, so I figured, yeah, let's give it a shot and dive right in. So before we go too far, I should mention that it's available now on PC, Steam, Good Old Games, Epic, uh, Xbox Series XX, Xbox One, and Game Pass. So if you got Game Pass especially, then you got the game already. Oh, that looks pleasant. I was outside today and it was nice. I realize that's kind of silly to say, but like, it's kind of important to go outside more. I feel like in a place like this, though, I'd fall off and break everything. Like, I don't know, there's there's something about these kind of like ramshackle rods pointing upwards. I feel like I'd take a tumble and then uh, break everything, like hit hit the one beam that holds the whole um, kind of village together. Uh, you know, like the beam I'm standing next to. Take that one out, it takes out this entire side, this falls apart. The whole bridging system, a couple of the ladders all sink. And all of a sudden, like, half the town is gone, and I'm probably stuck underneath everything, and very much in trouble. Oh, well. It's kind of interesting this genre has kind of snuck up on me. Platformers have been around since forever, but the cinematic ones, the ones with, like, a little bit more storytelling and puzzle solving, uh, it's usually, like, always all puzzles or all action. And this more, like, kind of tell a story. Whoop, well, and now we're dead. Like I said, th this is not diffusing my fears of accidentally hitting the one pole that's important. Honestly, the fact that you could fall and break that to some degree, like, I, if I lived in this town and this kid just broke, like, half of my roof off, I think I'd be upset and also terrified. Because a fall like that could stun a kid and they'd drown quick. But, yeah, everybody, I think, is just kind of used to it. Or everybody's secretly a fish person and cannot drown. I've seen this before. She catches you and then she cooks you, right? The I was already crouched, so when I started going, I uncrouched. There we go. That's a suspicious woman. Why does she even care we're sneaking past? I'm actually confused about that. Like, what is wrong with that unless she doesn't want to be used as a short... Good lord! This whole town! I'm going to break something and it's going to be not my fault. Also, that creature. It's got like a single eye and kind of a cute little curly tail. But also, it definitely, definitely ain't Earth. I'm curious. I I thought this was going to be a little bit more sci-fi focused. I like those painted backgrounds. That looks really nice, actually. And, like, it blends really well with the 3D. I can definitely tell where the, the 3D and the 2D kind of meet. But it's fairly seamless as far as I'm concerned. Which is nice. And a good sense of depth, too. I... I see a lot of platformers go by that just absolutely ignore depth. And it's really unfortunate, oh, I see. That it's very easy to just make a platform floating in space with nothing to anchor it into the foreground or to give it, you know, much connection to the background. You know, maybe you put, like, something in the background just to give it a, a sense of, like, there is something back there. Uh, but in this one every moment really does feel like kind of a vignette of a greater world. Uh, and it feels so much more natural and not disconnected. Okay, I'm going to go back to that butcher lady that was like, going to catch us. Like, these kids are doing a totally normal thing, presumably. 
think she's just a ang angie old butcher lady. Oh, this is cute and sad. So now that I'm actually paying attention, so we are Lana, and the sister is Elo. But what is her Elo? She diamond platinum? You know what? I actually don't play competitive games, so I don't even know what the top rank is for most games anymore. Uh oh. Oh, there's a lot of those. I saw the first one, and I was like, oh yeah, that'll be fine, right? That doesn't look fine to me. Those look like bullets. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Hello, human child. I'm here to add you to our gotcha machine. Like, this straight up looks like a gotcha ball, kind of. Just evil. I'm assuming I go back, but what if I don't? Okay. <laughs> that is fair. That is to be expected, I guess. Let us go the other way and not speak of my transgressions. Okay. Oh, that's interesting. Both... <laughs> this is kind of funny. Uh, barely, barely slows me down, too. Uh, but yeah, both... Left bumper and right, or left bumper and left trigger both make me crouch. I also kind of like the not English. I mean, I'm not actually even sure if the developers of this are primarily like English speaking, but especially for a game like this, I'm perfectly fine with it not using regular English. It kind of has that aspect of like, boy, translating this game must be really easy. And I've certainly thought of like, especially in the far more globalized market that, that you know, the games industry is nowadays. Or previously, every game just being in what? Japanese and English was probably good enough to cover most bases. I, eh, not fully. Okay, now at this point, collapsing the whole town on itself might actually be a mercy. Maybe. It's got, like, little spindly legs. I almost don't know if I'd be afraid of that thing. Like, if it doesn't have a laser eye. Boy, it got dark fast, too. Boy, those screams are... <laughs> actually fairly... Uh, realistic. Like, sometimes you got some fake screams, like the Wilhelm scream and whatnot. And then you got that scream, quiet as it was, that was unsettling. But yeah, I see that, that, like, spider bot. Unless it's got, like, some kind of weapon, it feels like you'd be pretty easy to just snap the leg off and then not have to worry about it. I'm just... Okay. One, I'm glad that the sci-fi has shown up at this point. It's part of the other reason why I was super into, into covering this one is that I am a sucker for sci-fi settings. And I'd seen those, like, giant spider ball mechs in some of the preview images for this, and I was like, ooh, that looks fun. That's kind of a neat tone. Almost musical. Now, do we think that this is a fully autonomous robot society that is just yoinking people? Or is it rival humans? Or... Oh. 
Well, at least at least the uh, buildings look pretty breakable. <laughs> I'm probably going to get caught more than once. So I should mention, by the way, I turned on um, an accessibility option. I could turn it back. Eh, you know what? I'm going to turn it off until one shows up. There are quick time events that you can turn on and off freely. And I'm curious to see how they go. I'm not a huge fan of quick time events personally, but I'll leave it on at least until we see one show up just because. Uh, but then I might turn it off just because. Because I want to show what they look like just for people who care about that kind of thing. But from my perspective, I kind of like them off. Quick time events are sometimes fun. I think from my perspective, it's just one of those that it's like, it worked really well back in the olden days, but for me, kind of once control has been taken away from me fully, uh, for like a cutscene or whatnot, I actually just want to watch. I, I don't really care to suddenly have the game be like, actually it's game time, surprise. And so, the fact that this game actually gives me the option to say, no, nah, no thanks. I appreciate that. It's nice. Now, do we think these are the lost children that live in the caves? Or just random rodents? I don't know. Maybe we'll find out. Why am I just assuming that this town exiles children? And that's why they had to hide from the butcher lady. Oh no, that's dark. Maybe the robots are here doing the right thing. <laughs> no. No, almost assuredly not. It'd be an interesting psych out. You know, turns out the town was actually the truly evil place. And the robots here are just arresting. No. I'll stop on this path. Alright, so this is where the spider bot. Jump scares us into the sunset, yeah? Hello. Hello. Uh. Hello. Man, what would you even do in this situation? Like... Obviously, the spider balls don't seem to be leaving, so that drastically in increases Lana's chances of getting Elo back. But, like, how absolutely horrid would that be if they then jettisoned off into space? How would you even cope with that? I mean, you pretty much, unless, unless you can find, like, a crash wreckage and somehow, like, teach yourself how to pilot it into, the, into space, like, this poor kid's stuck. Well, would be stuck in that situation. I don't know about you, I would have slept in the grass. Sleeping on a rock feels like, gosh, you'd be so stiff. That might just be my, like, 32-year-old back talking. But I feel like if I slept on that rock, maybe I'd be fine if I was, like, sleeping purely straight on my back. I could actually see that being maybe good for me. But I think I'd still be incredibly stiff and equally sore by the time I'm done. Then again, this is a child. I think. Young adult? It's kind of hard to judge age when the only physical feature of this child is kind of messy hair and then dot eyes. And now I'm just imagining, what if you just, like, reframed this game as a pair of, like, burly dudes? Like, just swap the characters out. Don't, don't do anything else. Just, like, one, uh, pair of burly lumberjacks went out doing lumberjack stuff. One gets kidnapped by the ro- by the robots. And then the village gets kidnapped. And then other burly lumberjack just goes to save everybody. Like, nothing changes, but it's just like... Brother! Brother! I, no, I don't know. I'm just curious if you could keep the same tone. Nah, it's friendly, right? 
Whee! Nope! <laughs> <laughs> it didn't even hit me with the bunch. <laughs> That's a nice roll. Okay, so we just wait for it to go back. Luckily, it doesn't seem to have a nose. Just one eye. So as long as I stay away from its peeper... Okay, maybe I shouldn't call it its peeper. I can see that being misinterpreted. As long as I stay away from its, uh, its ogular... Then I don't think we need to worry about it. It's just that that eye is so eye that I don't think you can just call it an eye. <laughs> just slide into the gap. I now, as a kid, I played a lot of um, Prince of Persia: Sands of Time. I never beat it. I never even got that far. Uh, actually, I. I didn't even play the real thing. I was playing the demo disc. But I was, like, really into the demo disc. Okay, so if I do... There was something... It moved. I don't know. Because I think that's the other platform there. The problem is I'm not sure where I can go with this. I think I'm going to try and go to the top... Le oh, there's another crate. There we go. I appreciate it because it's 3D, I can actually climb up mid-box as opposed to having to go back. But I played a lot of Prince of Persia Sands of Time as a child. Uh, because I got the demo disc, I think, with my PS PS2 when I'd picked that up. I'm so glad children are immune to falling damage. At least from this height. Uh, but because, because it was the demo disc, there's like no real reason to play it well. I would just kind of do whatever. Hmm. Yeah, that's good enough. Okay, I don't know if I can do that again. Nope. I was kind of hoping I could just drag them both along. So how does how do we do this? Uh. Okay. Let's just fool around for a bit and I'll figure it out. Okay. Don't do that then. It can climb up mid mid crate, but the uh, the elevator is a no go zone. Okay, so this keeps it up, but that's not helpful. But oh, maybe we have to do a double weight system here. Maybe. Or maybe this is enough. We just climb onto this. Because that other one keeps it... Yeah, I was overthinking it a smidge. Uh, but yeah, so playing Prince of Persia Sands of Time. I would just chuck myself into the worst situations. And like into a spike trap. Or down like a clearly like dangerous... Uh, I, those look pretty empty. So I don't think your sister's in there, kid. Uh, but yeah, I would absolutely just like chuck the prince into the worst places because I could just rewind time. I think that was one of those games. It was one of the first games to have like a nope, nope, nope. That didn't work. Unless I no, I can't go over it. Nope. Yep. Nope. Boy, I have very flimsy feet. How the deuce? Okay, there we go. Uh. <laughs> That's a very committed pig thing. Ogulor. I don't know. They probably have an official name. Is it alive? No, it looks pretty dead. Is not dead. Is it dead? Can I harvest its weight? Is this... <laughs> you know, I came back with the expectation that it was going to wake up and bite me. But I think I'm actually going to have to... Nope, I don't have to use this. I am going to have to use this. Come, pig. You must be a sacrifice for the tentacle? Actually, maybe not. 
Can I climb under the pig's back? Why can't I move the pig left and right? What's up with the tentacle? Like previously, oh, unless the pig scares the tentacle, is that the entire point? Is it? Oh, no, 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 no. I'm supposed to put it on these frondy things. What? That's just confusing. Well, weird frondy things, enjoy your new corpse weight. So now I now I can't help but th think of the ecolo ecological implications for this poor tentacle platform and its fronds. I don't know. You think a weird ogular pig thing just being placed in the uh, on your sensitive stalks? I mean, maybe that stuff will like it, or I just consigned that uh, plant into a very slow and sad oblivion. I was looking at a lot of plants today. Uh, went to an arboretum. And people had been... Oh. This is a whole thing. Why? Wait. Oh. Oh, it's cute. It almost seems like they're doing ecological research. It's very elaborate for catching a squeaker. Okay, so what does this do? No idea. Well, time for me to climb into the mouse trap. Nope. Hmm. Okay, maybe I have to close it first. There we go. And then we'll bring it over. But so, as part of going to this arboretum, you know the classic thing where people carve their names into trees? Uh, you know, it looks kind of harmless, but, like, it's not good for trees to do that. But there was one where people had, like, very emphatically carved a heart around their initials. And, like, the initials are bad, but the tree can usually just scar over that. But the, the whole area where they carved the heart um, had rotted and was, like, punched in. Uh, and, like, the the rest of the tree was mostly healthy. I was just kind of looking at it, thinking, like, gosh, humans are just kind of weirdly awful, and how much do you want to bet those people aren't even together anymore? But so, I don't know. I, I guess I've got, like, being a good steward on the brain. I also remember as a kid uh, living in Southern California, there were some cactuses, not many, but some cactuses. You know, enough cactuses that they were a thing. Okay, I don't think I'm really supposed to <laughs> swing on that rope. I was trying to see the upper limits, and the answer was mostly just a waggle. But I definitely remember more than once. Uh, dang, this kid is just not sure-footed in the slightest. How the... Oh. Okay, assuming there's nothing else there. we. I... I'm just going to assume this kid wears lead shoes. Because everything breaks underneath them. I, like, if I were this kid, I probably would never jump for anything rickety anymore, and I'd just be very slow. But then again, they haven't racked up any major in injuries, so I guess maybe they just can't learn their lesson. That's a smart squeaker. Whatever it is. But so as a kid, I would every once in a while just hack up or like dig up one of those cacti. Because uh, as an even younger kid living in New Mexico, briefly I'd run into a cactus because I was excited to see my cousin. And boy, picking quills out of your... I don't even remember where I got quilled. But I remember getting got pretty badly by said cactus. And so I always had like a bit of a vendetta versus... Versus cacti and always thought them to be like awful plants that I needed to destroy. And then now that I'm older, one, I was a dumb kid. Two, I just feel bad about destroying plants that were, you know, just thriving on their own. You know, here comes Wander at varying ages with a, uh, a bone to pick, a spine to pick with cacti. 
And so now that I'm older, I'm like, oh, poor plants. And then also... Dang, that little squeaker is just like doomed for the trap, isn't it? And... Uh, can I even get up there? Because it almost seems like I'm going to have to raise it first. Yeah, nope. That ain't it. I'm doomed. Okay. Let's just wait and watch. Because it'll come back at some point. I want to see where it goes. Because it seems like I need to get fully past it. Wait. Oh, I can move it. Oh, of course. When it's down, I can scoot it to the right. I don't know how long it's over there for. So we do know this thing has a weapon. It's just not much of one. Aha! What are you going to do to me now? Oh, no! Okay, I'm fine. Aha! Silly robot. Traps are... No! Okay! <laughs> Don't... Oh, no. Don't do that. Don't do any of that. I don't think I could have had that go b worse if I tried. Oh no. Ah, robot, you cannot catch me. I'm small and slow at climbing cliffs. <laughs> uh, it's fine. Once more with passion. Oh no. Oh no. Yeah, it's faster than me. Okay, so I have to scoot it over, then I have to do the, the dash. I can't do both in the same round. I was wondering about that as far as, like, efficiency goes. Speedrunners might disagree, but... Oh, damn it. They just make the worst noises. It's just sad crying all the time. But yeah, I, I actually... I don't think I can scoot it over the whole way. I think it's because I start a little late. Luckily, the robot is functionally blind. Come on. Come on, child. Aha! I'm way ahead of schedule. Okay, so I need to wait for the robot to be gone. I wasn't sure where the, the squeaker was going to go. Now I know, for a fact... I'm dead. Come for me, robot! Take me away from this mortal coil! I wish to reset time again. You have to be kind of quick. Because he starts all the way over there, which means I don't have a whole lot of leeway. Miss the quick save button. Those were the good days. Oh, I'm about to do something risky. Hit the quick save button. Not worry about it. How the heck is the robot that functional at getting at me? Well, anyway. I guess I just have to kind of wait here, don't I? That's a very... This is a mistake. <laughs> I was like, well, it's turned. Maybe it won't notice. It did. It did, in fact, notice. That was close. Now, it seems like he's named the the squeaker. Oh, it it doesn't even it doesn't even know. It didn't even notice me this time. Oh, that makes it easier. Yeah, it gives up real quick. See? Oh no, I have lost my squirrel and a child. 
Oh well. Oh, whoops. What do you think that thing feels like? Is it fluffy? Oh. Break its legs! Break your legs! Oh, that would destroy you. This feels more like a flashback than a... Well, I don't know, actually. Yeah. Oh, definitely a flashback. When everything is slow motion and gravity... Well, gravity? When everything is slow motion and gravity takes a bit of a... Oh, wait, no. We've been here. Why are we having a flashback to 10 minutes ago? <laughs> Unless we get back and it turns out that we are secretly like evil space princes, princes on the lam. Or that our memories are wrong. Or we get back and it's robots. Our sister is a robot and then our face falls off and we too are a robot. This game's not giving me a whole lot of ammunition on why we're having a flashback to 10 minutes ago. Yeah, actually, I have no idea why. Apart from, like, a life flashing before your eyes thing. I mean, who knows? Maybe Lana's dead and we're just playing a squeaker now. They seem to be a m much more functional entity. But yeah, I go back to my question. Do you think it's soft? Or is it, like, marshmallowy? It's, like, kind of the chinchilla soft, where it's, like, it's fur, but it's so, like, floofy and fine that it's almost like a gelatinous mass instead. Okay, maybe I'm overestimating how squishy chinchillas are. Still, I feel like you could probably sink your hands into that thing. Like a fair distance. How is this society not just fully domesticated the squeaker creators? You can pet this you can pet the thing. Get back here. I wish to give you all of the pats. It purrs. No Well, I actually cannot tell if the hand is descending into its depths. No, it's just covering the surface. That thing might be uh like full volume, if that makes sense. Like, you know with some animals, like uh, cats especially, they look like big and chonky and floofy and whatever, and then you get them wet and you realize that actually your cat is really thin? Oh. Alright, so we now have our puzzle critter. But with cats, like, they look big and floofy, uh, but then the moment you get them wet, for example, they suddenly just, like, reveal themselves to actually just be really scrawny little things under under all of that. And certain really floofy dogs, like, I feel like Pomeranians. Uh, if you get them wet, the fur just falls off and it's actually a little dog skeleton in there. They're actually just little necromatic beings. Um, what's another example? Owls. Owls and other birds. I'm not actually... Oh, yeah, no, no. I've definitely seen what a hairless owl looks like. Or hairless, featherless owl looks like. Which is, like, super duper sad. But then also... Sorry, I have to, have to chuckle at the necromancy. Nope, didn't work. Nope. Okay, there we go. Little bugger's got some hops to him. Uh, let's see. 
But yeah, owl, owls without their feathers or sufficient feathers for owling is just kind of a sad look. Dang it, critter! Stand! Stand on the front. Nope. Crap. Because, yeah, it comes up next to me. I guess I just got to get used to that. Gosh, I would be so scared here. There we go. Like, I'm not bothered by much. Is there actually anything over here? Mm, yeah. But I don't think I can go there. I could totally crawl on my belly if this character was capable of that. But that is officially too low for this boy to drop. That doesn't look like there's anything else there. Time to break his ankles. Dude knows how to combat roll. That's appreciated. That rock also had legs. Oh, I see. It wants me to open things up for it. That, actually, that I mean, that makes sense. But how would it know? Hola, I'm muy... <laughs> <¿Qué hay? Bleh. laughs> how is their society not just domesticated the heck out of these things, though? Like, if I was if I was some random villager that lived in this area. And I knew there were these super cute. Oh, wait, what? Right trigger, left, and then A? Oh, that's... Oh. I see. That's how it works. I was holding right, right trigger and right stick. And I was trying to figure out what I was doing wrong. That's a very bungee rope. Right, I was gonna say, I'm not really bothered by too much anymore. Oh. But heights scare the shit out of me. There is not much, oh my gosh. Yeah, this, this year with this kid's track record, death. <laughs> with no evidence to prove. That their sister is at all nearby. Okay. I credit where credit is due. The kid did not just try and hop for the platforms. I was honestly afraid they were going to hop for the platforms and fall again. Like they have been doing this entire time. Well, time to check her ankles. Seriously, you think you just like... Fracture them over and over again. At this rate. Ooh, new biome. Underground. I've been playing a lot of Zelda lately, and now I get really excited the moment there's, like, an underground section. I'm like, oh, is it going to, like, just flip the game on its head again? Actually, yes. This looks really nice. Like, on a pure artistry level, just, these are really lovely environments. I guess I got to sneak under this one. Ugh. Oh, hey, it's the luggage. It, uh, calcified a bit. Oh, that's weird. I don't know what it's doing, but I want to see where this goes. Okay, so, don't do that. <laughs> okay, so we've got to, oh, here. Will the rock being follow me now? It will not. Okay, so the rock being wants, wants critter. 
<laughs> Stay there. Be bait for the evil munch beast under the rock. I almost pressed and hold, held B because I'm a fool. I just saw the tentacles starting to come out. I'm like, you know what? I gotta figure out what this is. Like, I feel bad for the uh, ills that I am committing to both this child character and their uh, their little like monkey mouse squeaker, whatever you want to call it. But on the flip side, er. Eat the rope. Wow. I thought it would have to gnaw for a bit. No, it just went for the full munch. It looks like... Yeah, there's a critter there. Are we just not going to do anything to it? I guess it just lives there. Oh, left trigger, right... Yeah, there we go. Considering every other, like dark tentacular creature that we've encountered at this point. I, I know it's supposed to be te tentacled, but tentacular just sounds so much better. Uh, like, every single tentacled creature that we've encountered so far in this game... Well, actually, we haven't really encountered that many of them, but I, I still think I'd be a little leery about putting my little squirrel buddy... Okay, hold up. How do I... Mm. Maybe we go over here? Ah. What is... There's nothing. That's a weirdly functional dude. Yes, go into this mysterious hole and hope it takes you to the right spot. Don't worry, nothing's gonna try and grab you with their tentacles. Seriously, though, I would be losing my pants. My head? My mind? Losing my pants is probably the wrong word <laughs> or wrong phrasing. I'd be losing it if I had to jump over these gaps. And yeah, if... if... <laughs> I'm not going to pursue that any further. I don't know. I, I've noticed both Shell and I do this, but we tend to mix up our idioms in really strange and amusing ways. Uh, sometimes for the better, sometimes for the worse. I don't remember the one that we did earlier. Oh. Okay, so we've got to free that, but it's electrified. Well, time for Squeaker to gnaw, at it, gnaw on it anyway. It'll be fine, right? Okay, what is this? Nothing. Aha. Uh -huh. Yep. Looks like I must ascend to convince my squirrel to bite things. Hello. Oh, what is this? Lore stone. It is, in fact, a lore stone. Well, I see a fetus. That's a bad sign. Finding secret shrine 2 out of 10. There was one earlier. Oh, no. I've missed one. Well, 2 out of 10. That means this actually... Probably is not a particularly long... Oh, it's a solar panel. Wait, hold up. Okay, so I think what we want to do is power it first. We want to power it. We want to go here. We want to... Uh... I guess I can't interact with it in any way, shape, or form. Huh. That's an interesting question. I'm... Because it feels like I have to... Chew the... Hmm. Huh. Because I can move this left and right, but I don't think that's going to help me. And there's nothing lower. Unless 
Maybe it's not as zappy if it's slack. Nope, still zappy. Oh, I got it. I'm not supposed to do anything with this. I'm supposed to do everything with this. So I was just thinking of the uh, interaction terminal. Okay, so we want to do... Tell my squirrel to be there. But don't bite it yet, because that's death. You think it would not want to bite an electric... Well, no, actually, now that I'm thinking about it. Pretty much every rodent or other creature I've ever encountered, I don't think mines. I think even cats will chew on cables. Though not nearly as often as like a rodent would. I was hoping we go into like an underground biome. Eh, maybe that's what we're going into. Hopefully somewhere new. I just wanted to see a change of scenery before we we finish this off. And I think we're getting it. That's a nice tree. I once again the depth for this game, the the sense of place that it creates, even though it is a fully two dimensional side scroller. The fact that it feels like I am exploring an environment is really nice. Oh, it's cycling a lot of colors right there. Actually, let's just go under it. It ain't getting to me. Aha, fool. What are you going to do? See me? Farewell. You cannot crawl. Therefore, you have nothing against me. Okay, good. Squeaker is following. I legitimately cannot actually tell if these trees are 3D. I think they're just fully 2D. Like the rocks, the rocks are 3D, but the, the trees and stuff probably are just 2D, like flat 2D images that have just been painted. But it looks really nice and it blends well. What? Oh, right. When I tell it to go places, it stops there until I call it back. I wonder what the farthest you can go from your, your squirrel. Oh, it's one of the... Wow. It's one hell of a crater for this thing. It looks broken, though. Like, it's got a circle for something to come in or, or leave through. Feels kind of like a waste to have that thing, then. Then again, I'm sure, like... Oh... Another village? Another something, whatever it is. Maybe this is the new biome. I am unsure. Eh, no, it seems like we're gonna be in the forest for a while yet. This looks a little bit more, uh-oh. Aha. Take that luggage creature. I, for reference, for those of you that have not read Discworld yet, the uh, the creature with like a gazillion legs uh, reminds me of the luggage from that series. Effectively, it was a treasure chest with like oodles of legs that would also like eat people and carry like infinite items and resources and a bunch of other stuff. It's it's been some time since I've... I guess I've never read The Color of Magic. Oh. We actually want it to come back. Hmm. But yeah, it's been some time since I've, I've read The Color of Magic. Red scene. I watched the television show for it. Television... It was like a, like a mini-series, or maybe it was just like a BBC movie, I forget. Okay, I don't think it can follow. So if it stays there, we're good. 
but one way or another it was kind of one of those iconic disc world kind of characters and oddities that showed up more more than once and so whenever i see it, like a large object with a bunch of like oodles of tiny feet underneath it it's like oh it's the it's it's the luggage i don't know read read disc world novels they're all good and have aged like really gracefully There's some books when I read them, I'm just like, boy, yeah, that, that hasn't aged that well. Or like, yeah, that author wasn't nearly as uh, inspiring as I wanted them to be. I, no, nothing to do with that wheel. I'm actually kind of curious why that house has a giant hamster wheel. I guess when your six-year-old has too much energy, you uh, come up with interesting solutions. Can I actually... Yeah, there we go. Tamaki. Yep. Little dude's got hops. Anyway, I think we're actually kind of hitting the upper end of what my voice is capable of handling today. So let's uh, let's call it quits here. I really dig this game purely from the aesthetic perspective. I don't think we've gotten far enough to like really comment on the plot, if there really is much of one. I'm assuming we just keep chasing through... Uh, cha chasing... I'm assuming we just keep heading to the right, and eventually we find our way into some kind of technological, like, prison base, space station, space elevator, who knows what, and presumably rescue our sister eventually. I don't think it's really spoilers if I'm just making very semi-educated theories, but I do like the mixture between, like, absolutely gorgeous environments, and then... Kind of creepy robots, all things considered. For now, though. Let's just have him go through. I wonder what would have happened if I had... Oh. Oh. I see how this works. Okay. Maybe I needed it to be back there. I don't know what this thing is going to be about, because I, I might have screwed myself with this. We'll see what happens. I might also be able to kill it. Okay. Oh. I think I understand. I'm going to wait until it turns around. I have to use myself as bait for this one. A row buddy. Like I said, it looked pretty vulnerable to me. Anyway, so I think with all of that said, it's a good stopping point, at least for now. Let's uh call our squeaker back and bring it bring it with us. I I don't know what happens if you get too far away. I'm assuming it either game overs or you just hit a puzzle where you need to call for them. I'm not sure, and I'm not willing to uh do a science on that one. But anyway, I think Planet of Lana is a really neat little game, and it's fairly short too. I think it's six to eight hours, somewhere in there, which from my perspective is really nice. I'm a very busy guy. Oh, that looks, that's a cool background. And also kind of eerie and spooky. Um, you 
Yeah, I think that was a good stopping point as far as I'm concerned. Uh, anyway, so, uh, it's available, uh, Planet of Lana is available now on PC, uh, PC and Xbox One. Yeah, just wanted to make sure it, it wasn't on any other platform either. Hopefully it comes to other ones as well. I can see this being a really good Switch game. But for now, especially if you were a Games uh, Games Pass user, player, uh, if you're a Games Pass subscriber, I'd recommend giving this one a shot. It's a evening, maybe two evenings worth of gameplay and then you're done. And from my perspective, yeah, that was my head headrest going down. Uh, from my perspective, as a person who is incredibly busy and like pretty much doesn't get the chance to finish most of the games that ever come out, the shorter ones always really appeal to me because it actually means I can get to the end of it. And boy, has this been a visual feast from start to finish. I think the puzzles could be a little bit more complex, but I think that might also be one of those that I just need to give it some more time. Um, and also, to some degree, I, if they were too hard, then I think the game would lose some of that like atmospheric adventure aspect uh that if if you make your puzzle game too challenging then it's like pure puzzle game and what did this child expect <laughs> uh makes your game too challenging and then you can't really proceed you very much want to have that as like a separate thing entirely oh good our squirrel at least knew to follow us perfect and i did say i wanted to get to get to a new biome this one's got, ooh, luminescent crystals. I like it. But for now, at least, if you guys like this video in any way, shape, or form, leave me a like. Helps more than you know. And if you want to see more rad new, yep. <laughs> rad new games every single day, then hit subscribe because I got tons to check out and show off. And, of course, one last thank you to uh, Wishful and Thunderful, uh, Thunderful Publishing uh, for sponsoring this video. It was very kind of you. It was a lot of fun, and I'm looking forward to maybe playing some more of this at some point when I find the time. But for now, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.